introduce um, Teach OSM and uh, what it is, uh, what it is that we're all about, what it is we're doing, and, and um, so first of all, uh, for those of you who are uh, new to the project and, and new to OpenStreetMap, Open uh, Teach OSM is a is a part as a chartered project of uh, OpenStreetMap US. Um, it stems from an idea that um, we've been floating around since oh I don't know for the past five six years or more, um, but we um, essentially it as those the four uh, bullets they're uh, promoting the adoption of OpenStreetMap basically to teach geography and cartography. Um, also with the aim of diversifying the OpenStreetMap community, um, getting students started younger with OpenStreetMap and getting them exposed before they're making vocational and avocational choices. And um, there's this other um, thing that we need to think about as well as a community and that's recruiting the next generation of mappers to continue on. And uh, lastly, I think to foster a generation of engaged citizen mappers. And if, you, um, if you're familiar, if you've been doing mapping, you know, and uh, you have a pretty good feel for um, the level of engagement that you have with um, your local area as a mapper. Um, OpenStreetMap is a great tool, and I, I never tire of talking about OpenStreetMap and how suitably awesome it is for, um, for teaching students. Um, for four big reasons. First of all, it's accessible, and um, it's the accessibility that's granted to you and I is it makes it perfect for classrooms. There's uh, nothing really to download, um, and uh, it's all available on a course. All you need is a is a, basically an internet connection and some uh, protocols and some training. Um, it has a great amount of utility, and I think this is the the great thing. As mappers, we're often focused on kind of the data and practical approaches to mapping, but the utility and the downstream utility, and I only need to point to the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap uh, organization for an example of that kind of utility. Um, the value, I think oftentimes the, the value of OpenStreetMap as a public institution, as a public information infrastructure often gets overlooked, but that, uh, that um, Geospatial information is valuable, and with each addition and edit of the map, it gets more valuable. And the fact that it's open and that anybody can be a mapper. Some students mapping, courtesy of Celeste Reynolds. Um, the other thing I think, which is really, um, if, if you'll recall, if you're of an age, um, you may recall your geography courses from middle school and high school. and how they were often a, a, a repetitious uh, amalgamation of memorizing capitals and the major exports of Ecuador and things like this. When you are using OpenStreetMap though, you're actually you know, doing geography. You're developing these capabilities with geospatial technologies, meaningful engagement with those sorts of things. You're engaged in experiential learning. And uh, there's the great option for service learning projects. I've been hosting mapathons with um, with teachers and with my students at George Washington University um, using healthsites.io uh, to map um, uh, health facilities in support of the COVID-19 um, response. And uh, that's a, been a great service learning project that people can do. And also, I think lastly, is that if you are mapping, you are contributing as a citizen of the community, and it kind of deepens your connection um, to the place that, that you're in. So what kinds of things do we do with at uh, Teach OSM? It boils down to just a few things, really. Um, a lot of workshops and trainings. Um, we spend a lot of our time and energy um, focusing on um, directly training teachers through workshops and um, sometimes with videos and, and supplemental materials. But that's um, kind of the bread and butter of, of what Teach OSM does. Um, we do a fair amount of contact, uh, content development to support those workshops and training, getting you know, worksheets, um, things like uh, classroom modules and things like that. We engage in classroom teaching. Uh, me, um, Richard Hinton, who is not on this call tonight, but um, Richard is also, and I both teach a module uh, on OpenStreetMap within our uh, classes at George Washington University. So we're extending that and developing rubrics and things like that. We also have um, partnerships to extend our reach and the reach of our partners as well. Um, we have had a very 
good and uh, successful partnership with the American Geographical Society for about the last four years. And um, a new, uh, a new uh, partnership with the Geotech Center in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, their audience is largely the community college system and I'll be presenting a workshop with them uh, in June. Um, this is uh, one of the kinds of materials that, um, that we are producing for content. Um, this is a module. Um, Sean Goulet um, was instrumental in kicking off this kind of uh, uh, a series of modules that track the, uh, the advanced placement human geography curriculum. And there's, there's a dozen different modules in this that, take, uh, that are kind of templates for teachers to use in teaching open mapping within the context of the APHG curriculum. Um, this is another example of just um, one of the sheets that we've developed um, largely for, um, for teachers, but um, it's something that they could also pass on to students. It's student friendly as well, but it kind of presents the material in a format that's relatable to a teacher and it's digestible that has things like time and the suitability and, and what sorts of um, things that are required for um, engaging in a classroom environment. Um, lastly, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about um, this, but um, we have one of the, um, when we were first starting out, we, um, we four, five, six years ago, we would often, you know, parachute into a place. We teach teachers how to map and then say, okay, that's it, you're on your own, goodbye. And uh, we quickly learned uh, from feedback from teachers that that really wasn't quite enough. And um, teachers um, don't necessarily have a geographical background. They may have had um, a few courses in geography in college, maybe in, in, you know, as part of their um, academic training, but few of them have a deep, uh, deep, you know, roots in, in geographic techniques. So we're trying to help them apply open mapping to what has to be, uh, what they have to cover in the curriculum. Um, one of the things that I've been trying to do lately is to um, develop some projects to serve as template. And if you'll notice my screen here, bracketed down at the bottom, it says got some suggested um, ways to use this project to apply it to say, uh, migration routes and demography or transportation unit or something about agriculture and rural land use and and even historical geography. Um, some of the challenges that we're facing um, as as a uh, as a project there's two two big ones that um, that are recurring with us. Um, number one is the tools set. Um, we, you know, the ID editor is great, the tasking manager is fantastic, but really what we lack in uh, in terms of classroom support is a way for teachers to track several teams in several classes of students and track them and be able to assess their work, to assess their quality. Are the roads connected? Are the buildings squared? Are they tagged correctly? Things like that. So those tools to kind of complete the entire um, um, rubric within the classroom module, we really don't have a good handle on. So that's a big uh, challenge for us going forward. Um, funding, um, developing a sustainable funding stream is, um, is uh, another big challenge for us. I think um, we're just now beginning to come to terms with some of the disruption due to COVID-19. Um, how are we going to conduct our in-person trainings and workshops um, before? Um, we have a lot of teachers and students who we're trying to reach. And while my internet is very good right here, I can't always be assured that uh, our teachers and our students have um, reliable internet access and, um, and computing power to, to um, actively map. And then there's the institutional disruption, which was uh, underway to begin with, but now we have to think about what are we going to do in the fall? So um, this is, uh, this is kind of, I, I think, a bigger challenge, and it feeds into things that, that were um, underway prior to the COVID-19. Um, there's a lot of uh, ferment going on. First of all, the, the, the biggest problem we have is how we're going to adjust to the post-pandemic future in the, in the um, immediate future. Sure. But lurking behind this for a while is this increasing emphasis that um, the education community is putting on to educate the whole person. And from um, if, if you haven't seen the geo capabilities um, 
website and uh, the work that uh, David Lambert has done um, to promote this kind of uh, notion of students being entitled to, uh, a, a, you know, they have rights within the curriculum and they should have access to um, the most valuable instruction, including the powerful disciplinary knowledge within that. So within that realm, how can we, how can Teach OSM meet this environment? How can we, um, how can we effectively meet the needs of teachers who are having to meet a, a new, um, this, this educational challenge? Um, one of the responses to this that I'm really quite fond of and um, fits well within the open mapping environment is this notion of spatial citizenship. Um, and uh, Sarah Bednars and Yun Yong Shin have uh, coined this term uh, about spatial citizenship that refers to the importance of geography in, in, in forming our civic activities. And um, I think this, I love this quote here, citizenship is inherently spatial because uh, it takes, citizenship takes place in geographic space. So there is a spatial dimension to citizenship and we can characterize these things. And I don't want to get too deep here, but um, it's just to give you kind of an illustration of what spatial citizenship means. When we talk about this use of ref reflexive use of geospatial technologies, in other words, like when you're asked for directions, you automatically go to uh, a mapping application and type in the to and the from and get the results, the driving instructions and things like that. Or being able to make a quick map, you know, using field papers or, or some other application. Um, also, an understanding of geographic concepts, place, space, location, navigation, wayfinding, and those sorts of things. Um, also, this operating knowledge of civic responsibilities, this kind of Socratic notion of the obligation of the state to the citizens and the citizens of the state. What, how do we as citizens engage with our communities? And how can we use OpenStreetMap to advance that sort of engagement? And that feeds into that last bullet there of the replied use of civic, of geography for civic renewal. How do we use OpenStreetMap to create the places and envision the places that we want to live in healthy communities? So I'd like to posit that open mapping is the on-ramp for a, a whole raft of spatial skills. So this capabilities, it's certainly about capabilities. You want people to get good jobs. And that's certainly part of an education is you want to get that. Above and beyond that, we want to provide teachers sort of a missing geography class that they've never had and, and give students foundational knowledge of spatial concepts that they can take with them um, throughout their lives and be able to interpret things through the spatial lens. And then lastly, that OSM community and, and the open mapping um, allows for expressions of ethical concern and civic responsibilities. And it fosters a lifetimes of learning and civic involvement. So let's talk just practically. Let me rope this back in by talking practically about how you can connect with all of this spatial citizenship and with um, education and putting OpenStreetMap in the classroom. Two big things. Volunteer to connect with your teachers. And we've got a couple teachers on the, on the line here would be happy to volunteer uh, their uh, their take on what the best way to involve yourself with your um, teachers and with your community. But you can offer, as an experienced mapper, you can offer technical support for mapping events. Like a lot of teachers, it's daunting to throw a mapathon and to do this. And also to kind of supervise the mapping quality of a lot of different students. That's a lot of work. And it's a lot of work for teachers to undertake that kind of retain the technical know-how that we have as, as mappers. But you can help them uh, provide a, an entree into the open street mapping community. Second thing is you can contribute to the Teach OSM project. We certainly welcome opportunities for you to um, um, contribute to developing content. You can post things on teachosm.org and um, help us develop these tools, these grading tools. I like to think about um, um, a classroom environment where we've got something like OSM Cha on steroids, where we can use that in a classroom. But those are the sort of, those are the kind of the tools that teachers need at their disposal in order to really embed OpenStreetMap within the classroom. 
So lastly, um, this is just our contact, contact information. Um, we are, uh, the easiest way is to get in touch with us on the Slack, on the TeachOSM subchannel there. Um, we do have a website, we encourage you to submit your uh, content to that. I'm happy to um, help you with that. And uh, lastly, if you really need to email us, it's info at teachosm.org. Thanks, and I'll open the floor for questions.